Today we're going to be looking at using the span tables to size the timbers or to work out what size timbers we need to use for a construction. So the example we're going to use to start with is a floor joist. We're going to size a floor joist up using this span table. So there's a bit of information we need to know in order to use this table. So the first thing we need to know is the roof load width that is coming down on the floor joist. We need to know what the floor joist span is. We need to know what type of roof sheeting or roof tiling is used in this construction. We need to know the type of span, whether it's single or continuous, and what the joist spacing is. So all of this terminology, this was covered in the previous video, so if you're not sure how to work out what all these are, then I suggest you go back to the previous video and have a look. So all this information that we uh, we get off the plans will give us what size timber is going to be necessary to do the job in the situation that we're looking at. So I've got some information up here, and these figures were just taken from the previous video with our spacing, our type and span distance, roof load width and the type of roof uh, that's going on this building. So we're just going to use this table to narrow down what size timber we need. So if you look at the very top, there's some figures along here which is our uh, roof load width. Now the issue we've got here is you can see these numbers are repeated throughout depending on a few other things that we're going to look at in a minute. So we actually have no roof load width coming down on this joist and that's very common in a lot of constructions. Most of the time the floor joists don't take the roof. There's a few situations where it does but in our example there's no roof load width. So if you have a look there's several zero columns. So we need to know which one to choose from. So we're going to go and narrow something else down first. We're going to start with the type of roof. It's only two choices here, so this is going to narrow our, our search down to half the uh, table in one hit. And of course it's a sheet roof, so our figure what we're looking for is going to be somewhere in this half of the table. Now we're going to narrow down what type of span this joist is. It's a single span, so that means we're going to be down into this area. Now we can look at our roof load width. We've only got one option. We've got a zero option that we're going to choose. So somewhere in this column is the span we're looking for. The options now are our joist spacing. We have a 600mm joist spacing. So we have now narrowed down to our last option. Somewhere in this list of figures is the span that we are looking for. Now the span of this joist is 4850. So we go down here looking for 4850. Now we can't find exactly that figure, so we can go up to the next one. You can see here we've got a 46 and we've got a 49. Our span is in between there, so we're going to go up to 49 here, the 4 meters 900 span. So that is the span of the joist we're looking for, which means that is the size of timber we need. Now bearing in mind, every span table is specific to a stress grade of timber. And up the top here, just above where you can see, is usually the stress grade that this table is. you just got to make sure that you're sizing up the correct grade. So you might have a timber that's maybe F14 or F17, or it might be an MPG12, or it could be anything. Just make sure you're using the right table that is appropriate to the stress grade of timber that you're using. So once we narrow down the size of the timber we need, it's important to have a read of the notes that are always underneath these tables. So here's just a little screen capture at the bottom of this table. There's the size that we've selected. And there's a list of notes under here. So most of these notes I'll let you have a read through, but there is one that I'm going to have a particular look at. And this is note number five here. There's a couple of words in here I want to identify. We've got the word actual and the word allowable. So this note number five refers to how far this joist can cantilever over the last bearer if, if it's appropriate to cantilever it out. And there's two restrictions. The first restriction is that it can't cantilever any more than 25% of the allowable single span. And there's also another restriction, no more than 50% of the actual back span. So allowable span, if we, as soon as we see the word allowable span, that refers to whatever figure 
we have found up in this table. So even though our exact span is less than allowable span, we're going by 25% of the allowable single span. So 25% of that figure. As soon as we see actual, that means what we've measured off our drawing or off our plan. So we're going 50% of what is actually measured. And of course, it's not just any uh, span, it's the back span, which is the first one behind the cantilever. So just to repeat, allowable span means a figure that's in the tables. Actual means what's actually on site or on the drawings or our plans. Let's have a look at the fact that this specifies allowable single span. So let's look at a different example. Let's say we were looking for a continuous span joist, which would give us this figure over here. This column was in our continuous span column. The fact that this specifies allowable single span means that even though our allowable span might be 5.8 metres, we're still using this single span figure, the equivalent single span figure, when we're working out the cantilever. And a great deal of the time that may be an issue. Most cantilevers, in my experience, aren't very big. They're not usually up to the limit of what we're allowed, but you may occasionally come across a situation where you need the most amount of span you can get. So it's very important to read through this note, and it's important to read through all of the notes that are under your span table, because some of these may become important. Let's look at another example. We're going to look at a bearer now, and we've pulled some figures here from the previous video once again. So here is a table for floor bearers. So the first thing we're going to look up here is uh, the fact that this is floor bearers, and it specifies this entire table is for a floor load width of 2.4 metres. Now you'll notice our floor load width here is only 1.25 metres. And that's because the next table down from here was something much smaller, probably only 1,200 maybe, or a metre floor load width. So there wasn't anything close, so we had to go up to the next table that allowed our floor load width. So that specifies which table we're going to use. The next thing we're going to look at is, again, the type of span that's going to uh, give us two options to choose from. This time we have a continuous span. So that means we are in this half of the table. Now we're going to look at our roof load width. So we've got three options for our roof load width. The roof load width here is 2.5 metres. The next one up from our choices is this 4.5 metres. So that puts us into this column. And the last thing to look at is what type of roof. And once again, this is a sheet roof. So this here is where we're going to be looking for the span of our bearer. Now you'll notice there's two columns, one for the span, but one for the cantilever. So when we were looking at the floor joist, we were looking in the notes for the cantilever distance. This time we're also looking in the tables. So when we go down through this column, look for the span. Our span is 2888. We've got a 26, 28, 31. We're in between here, so I have to go up to the next one, which is 3.1 metres, which means that is the size of timber that we need. So that timber will span up to 3.1 metres and it will cantilever up to 900 millimetres. So let's look at the notes that are underneath this table. So there's our selection. Here are our notes. Uh, now before we look at these notes, I want to explain something. You'll notice here this size timber has a 2 in front of it with the size. If I flick back to that previous result, our floor joist, it just had a height and a thickness, a 240 by 45 mil piece of timber uh, is the appropriate size for that joist. But this time, if I flick back to where we were, this size timber has a 2 in front of it. And all that means is we're actually using two bits of timber that size to make up the bearer. So here's an example down here. This has two 170 by 35, so we're going to get two bits of 35 mil thick timber and nail them together to make up a 70 mil bearer, and that's what that means. So always remember if there's a 2 in front of it, it's a double piece of timber laminated together, 
And in fact, there is a note in here, this one here, multiple members shall be nailed together as per clause 2.3. So you'd have to go into the 1684 and have a look at clause 2.3 because that will give us some rules about how many nails and how often this has to be nailed together. So let's get back to the rest of these notes and I'm going to highlight this one here. Again, it's a cantilever note shall not exceed 50% or half of the actual backspan. So we're not using this figure. It's not half of that. That's the allowable span. We're using this figure. This is the actual span. Bearing in mind, this is a continuous span bearer. If I've got a number of spans that this single piece of timber spans over, the very last span behind the cantilever might possibly be less than that. It would be what you would have to measure off the plans. So 50% of whatever the actual backspan is, and you would have to see which is smaller, that, half the backspan, or this, the allowable cantilever. And whichever one of those is smaller, that's the limit of how far you can cantilever that bearer. So thank you for watching this video. I hope that helps you out when you're uh, sizing timbers using the span tables. Thank you.